Hey everyone, welcome back. You might have noticed in last week's video that I didn't actually get half of the stuff done that I had set out to do. So my kale did not get picked, my peppers are still in the ground, and most of the lettuce that bolted is also still in the ground. So we have lots to do today, and I'm gonna bring you in, show you around everything. We have got Rue with us today. I know she hasn't been with us for like the last couple of weeks. I've got lots to do. I am going to pick some of this kale for, for home eating and there's a guy at work that always brings me in mushrooms. So he grows his own oyster mushrooms and he goes foraging for mushrooms. And he always, on a Monday or a Tuesday, brings in stuff like from what he's got over the weekend. So I said I would bring him in some kale as like a little like barter exchange swap type thing. And I think in here, some of my turnips are ready and I cannot wait to show you. It is a beautiful day here in the tiny garden. The sun is shining, it's a little bit cold, but it is a beautiful autumn day and we are coming into the season full swing. It really feels like autumn now. And it is my favorite season of the year closely followed by spring but autumn is my time like I love this time of year possibly an odd thing for maybe for a gardener to say because like I actually don't like the summer <laughs> I know it's great for all the, the veggies and all of those sort of warm season plants to grow but like autumn winter spring we're now coming into my time of year guys so if you like the autumn give the video a like and let's get into today's video Okay, we're gonna sort this out. And I need to be really careful because I am like the worst person for being like heavy handed. I just go in and I'm like, fup, 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 fup. And like everything like snaps and breaks. And even when I'm trying, I still manage to break things. So hopefully I don't destroy anything. And I'm actually gonna get my clippers and we're gonna to top the sprouts today as well. So that they're ready for Christmas. So this is what one of my purple sprout and broccolis are looking like at the minute. It is starting to produce in the middle, like it's set up like a little bud. So I don't know, have I stressed it or what's going on with that? Because I was hoping that it wouldn't produce until obviously April. Now this is about five times the size of my other two that I have. But as you can see, it's all busting out of the frame completely. Like, I mean, that is just the most ridiculous system ever. And you can see they're all like leaning to the left. So I might need to go in with a few stakes and stake them up. And obviously you can see the height of the bamboo cage that I put on this. Because the packet said that the purple, the purple sprout broccoli, the dwarf kale would only get like a metre high. So I made it a metre high and it's obviously grown taller than that. So I don't know guys, everything in this tiny garden decides just to kind of break all the boundaries and grow really, really tall. <laughs> but you can see everything's leaning over and it just needs a really good looking after. A load of leaves need to be taken off and hopefully there'll be something in there for us to eat. I will also dig out these peppers, trim them back and try and overwinter them. I feel like these are gonna have a better chance next year because I'm gonna leave them indoors to produce, but they are also perennial, so I don't actually need to throw them away. So we will also do that. But yeah, let's go in and take all of that off and give these guys a little bit of room because it's getting a little bit squishy in there. So next year I'm going to need to find a better solution. I absolutely love having the bamboo in the garden. I thought it looked so nice with the tomatoes. I thought it'd be perfect for this. I think for the tomatoes obviously it wasn't strong enough but I think for this it's definitely strong enough because it's withheld like many storms. But when I first did this, I was under pressure. I, um, if you saw the end of the video, when I actually put this up, it was in the middle of a storm. Like the lightning and everything like was like going across the sky. It was just like, probably not even safe for, for me to have been outside, but that's what I did. And I ended up like doing it really, really quickly and then running inside. So yeah, I think it was probably a little bit of a rush job and I don't think I put the frame up quick enough. And I just think I need to make it a bit taller. Like I didn't expect everything to get as high as it did, but that's not bad because I should get a nice crop from the stuff that's in here, which is kind of cool. And I think the bamboo looks nice. The frame was really easy to make as well. Like I had like all these beautiful connectors, which I showed as well in the video when I put this together and yeah, simply put together. And strong enough so but I think the time's come now to dissemble it all and 
yeah, let these big brassicas breathe a little and have a little bit of room. So in here, I think I've got six brassica plants and I think I have two kale plants and I'm really impressed with the kale. I will definitely grow that again next year. I will obviously grow Brussels sprouts because I grew those last year and this year and it's kind of becoming a little bit of tradition and it's great to be able to harvest something for Christmas. I normally come out on Christmas Eve and do a little harvest of all the veggies, which is super nice, but I don't think I'll have that many this year to harvest because I didn't do parsnips and the slugs ate all my carrots. <laughs> so I'll probably be buying those from my, my lady in the CSA. But we will be able to harvest some sprouts together, hopefully, which will be super cool. So it's obviously, oh, there's so many things on this. Oh, I don't usually get like squeamish like that. <laughs> um, we'll just, I don't want to kill it. I think it's a little cocoon, but it's like really furry. So I do feel like there is a place for F1 varieties, particularly when you have a small space or a balcony garden, just getting that slightly more like, you know, compact type plant really benefits people in small spaces. So yes, I have absolutely loved growing like um, heirloom varieties and there is that sustainability piece with it, but there is definitely a place for F1 varieties in the tiny garden. So I'm gonna bring that forward with me for next year. Rue's coming in and she's, <laughs> everything I put down, Rue's just like charging over to give it a good old sniff, bless her. She wasn't out here for so long, she's really missed it. So she's just sunbathing there, which is absolutely lovely for her. I've missed not having her out here in the garden with me, but I suppose you just can't risk it when they're in season. It's not fair on other people's dogs either, do you know? They go wild, especially like the boys, do you know? <laughs> So, I'm going to try and get this one, this one here, out. But it is seriously rooted into the ground and then I can pot it up in a 30 litre container. I know this is probably going to stress it out, but I need to move it. Oh, like they are some serious, serious roots. So we'll get this potted up and hopefully I haven't ruined it. So taking out this purple sprout in has definitely opened up that space a little bit and the Brussels sprouts look so cute. So obviously I need to do a bit of maintenance, get rid of some of the dead leaves to obviously deter the slugs because slugs absolutely love anything that's decaying. But look how cute my sprouts look. That looks like such a promising harvest better than last year but they are looking awesome so I'm going to go in and take off some more of these branches and we're also going to top them so that they mature all at the same time ready for my Christmas dinner <laughs> just placed in a bamboo cane as well just to like prop everything back upright and give it a little bit of stability for the next few months. Another bouquet of kale. <laughs> Look at this guys, it is beautiful. I mean there's a couple of leaves that are looking a little tired but the rest of it looks amazing and I still have more to come on the other plant but this looks amazing I absolutely love it who needs flowers when you can have a bouquet of kale instead so half of this will be for us and half will be for my friend obviously I'll give him the nicest leaves that I can get out of the bunch that are here 
the leaves on the second plant are actually a little bit more delicate and a little bit smaller, which is nice. So I might give those ones to my friend. It absolutely thrived in that mediocre summer that we had. So it really is amazing. And I think this is a really like frost hardy plant as well. So it should keep growing over winter as well. Like I probably should have done a second sowing of this because then I would have had like a nice crop through the winter. I feel like most of this is gonna be finished up soon. I don't, I don't know how long it lasts, like how long it keeps growing. So yeah, I should have gone in with a second sowing, but I'll know next year. So yeah, I'll sow two and then do another couple of sowings a couple of weeks later. But still gorgeous. I'm sure I could probably blanch some of this as well. I think it's such a good alternative to grow kale like compared to like cabbages in a small space like one cabbage head will probably take up like the size of this area roughly i'd say you could probably fit two cabbage heads here but a kale like i feel it's such a benefit to grow plants that have like multiple things that grow off of one stem so like cucumbers tomatoes kale like you know that kind of thing it's just like a great thing that i've learned this year is to grow grow something that grows multiple things that you can produce rather than like a single parsnip and it takes up that space and then you pick it and it's done whereas I'm picking this and I can come back and pick some more so yeah great tip actually if anybody's wondering oh I love cabbage and that kind of thing this is a great substitute and it works well in a small space and it's frost hardy so you can see like we've really cleared out that space there now so great airflow and I can keep an eye now on slugs. I'm not gonna actually put the netting back on. I need to be on proper slug patrol now from now up until when we harvest the rest of this stuff in here. So it's great. I feel like I've really enjoyed having the netting on here, but like I find it really difficult to then come in and harvest it because I don't take the net off. <laughs> so I've really, really, really enjoyed taking that net off and getting a big harvest. It's kind of like, catch 22 isn't it like you put all of the like systems in place to protect it from like all the pests and things but then like it becomes then such a challenge because you had it so tightly tucked in that it was nearly impossible just to go in and grab a couple of things so I need to think of a better system like maybe something with like a lid that I can like lift up and down or something uh, I'm just staking that kale up because it's leaning into the Brussels sprouts so I just want to give it a little bit of support now I'm gonna go in and take out my pepper plants. So I only got one pepper this year. Obviously the patty pan completely took over all of this space. So they were doomed to start with the minute I put them in here. Obviously I put them in here because this bed gets full sun, but they got completely taken over by the brassicas and the patty pan. So they didn't have the best season, but I'm hoping I'll take the three. This one looks a bit sad, so I'm gonna leave that one, but I'm gonna take these three, pot them up and bring them on over winter inside and then possibly plant them. No, I won't plant them out, I'm not. I'm gonna leave them in the house because it was warmer in the house and leave them in the front room where the, win the window, I've got a massive window there and all of the sun goes in there. So they'll be perfect next year, hopefully in there. And yeah, they're perennial, so they should last, hopefully. Um, you do have to take off all the leaves, so I'm gonna give that a go and see i've never actually done this so this was the first year i did peppers um i won't say it was a failure because i did get one and i have three plants that i can keep for next year which is kind of cool so that actually um brings me on to what i should say to you guys i actually am due to go for surgery not next week but the week after so Obviously, I don't know when I'm going to be back up on my feet, so I don't know if I'm going to be out here or not. Um, I don't actually know 100% what they're going to be doing yet. Obviously, in the hospital, I just know that I'm going in um, in two weeks from now. So I was just wondering, you know, obviously, I still want to be like connecting with you guys and chatting with you. And the channel has had such growth in the last like three to four months I think like we're on like over 800 subscribers now which is really really cool so I was thinking I'm not gonna be up on my feet so I could probably do a Q&A session if you guys were interested in that so like I don't know maybe like leave a comment below like with like Q so then I know it's for like the Q&A 
and just ask me any questions that you might have like about life or whatever it is that you're interested in and we'll have like a sit down chatty session with a cup of tea when I'm recovering after my surgery um, and if you're not interested in that and nobody asks me any questions then I will see what I can do to try and hobble outside and um, get a video out to you guys. So in this container is three tomatoes that I grew in the window inside the house. I was really impressed with how they did. I got some beautiful kind of small cherry tomatoes, about three or four trusses per plant. And they were actually so much sweeter than the ones that grew outside. So overall, really impressed with that. And we'll probably do that again next year. But for now, everything's looking really tired in this. Now I could revamp it. It is setting a second lot of fruit, which is super cool, but I think I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to use this planter for my peppers to overwinter in. So I'm going to clear it all out. Everything looks completely fried as well. That window gets so hot with the sun when it's a sunny day. So like the basil in here is all gone crispy and yeah, it just needs a total refresh. So I'm going to refresh the soil, refresh the plants and then pop in my peppers into this for overwintering. So yeah, I was so so impressed with the tomatoes in this inside box this year it was well worth growing them inside as well because obviously we've got such early blight as well definitely do it again next year and had i not done it like i wouldn't have got many tomatoes well obviously i did get loads of tomatoes but these were like super sweet super juicy absolutely delicious and like when i'm editing and stuff the videos like obviously my computer's in that room so like it's just so nice just to like grab one and just have a little snack so these are like the best snacking type of tomatoes and i will do it again next year because if we get another blight then these will be my backup they tasted nicer yield was yeah less and the size was smaller but still gave me so much joy the basil did okay in here but i think the window was too hot like keeping this moisture level in this was really really difficult so i'm not gonna use that basil or that but i'm gonna keep that one and not that one i'll throw those away but the rest i will use to put into pesto i've got some pine nuts actually on my food shop so i can make some proper pesto so i will use that and I'm gonna go in and completely, I'll keep those little tomatoes, they might ripen up. I'll keep them. All those tomatoes in the house ripened up, which was great. The ones I didn't put into chutney. I must actually show you my chutney. I made, I made chutney and I made, I did the pickle with onions, so they look really cool, but some of the jars didn't seal, so I left those in the fridge. Um, but maybe when I'm laid up after my surgery, I can give you a little look at what I did and um, yeah, we can go over that, which would be cool. Oh, there's nothing like the smell of a tomato vine though, is there? So I think I'm going to completely refresh this soil. So I'm going to chuck this into the main bed and put in some new peat-free, uh, I think it's Horizon, Westland's New Horizon compost is what I use. So completely refresh this and I tried to get as much dirt as I could off of the peppers. So like I was just patting them down just to get as much off and then we'll go in, prune all those and pop them in here. I actually love this pot. It's really, really cool. Like it has like this um, watering tube here at the top and then it has like a separate part at the bottom that you can pull out. It's so like it comes in two pieces and then the roots grow underneath this into the water reservoir, which is really cool. So then you pop them in like that. So I really, really like this. I did make the mistake last year of using it outside, but it is specifically designed for inside. They have the size as well. 70 centimeters, balcony trough from Steward. Absolutely love this. The one I have outside with my herbs on as well is the same brand. This is the compost I'm using, New Horizon, peat-free vegetable compost. I wasn't sold on peat-free compost, you know? I wasn't sure about it. Like, it's a really funny texture. Like, I don't think the moisture levels were too bad. I know I've heard a lot of people say that, but actually, I'm not, like, disappointed. I actually think it's really nice. I think 
like it germinates seeds perfectly like my potatoes I used all of this for my potatoes they grew perfectly all my containers I think have this in them and like I've had no trouble with it at all I thought it might not work or germinating seeds would be difficult because it is kind of fibrous and like rough but actually the seeds that I have sown in it have been great like I even did lettuce seeds and they've, they've even germinated so overall quite impressed actually not not too shabby at all I know that there's a lot of peat free compost out there that actually don't really do much um, but I mean again I have supplemented most of my peat free compost with farmyard manure so maybe that's where the extra boost is coming from haven't solely used it on its own so there is that to take into consideration so I'm just going to snip off I did a quick google right <laughs> I've never done this before so I just did a quick google and I it says to basically take off all the leaves so that's what I'm going to do and I think I might be just left with like a stumpy type plant for the next few months so I'm just going to take them all off trim it all the way back even like that I saw pictures and they just did this so hopefully I haven't ruined the plant but I think I'm doing the right thing and we'll find out in a few few months next spring whether I did do the right thing or not so really pleased to find out that these were perennial as well I feel like in an Irish climate we don't get the heat that these really need so I think this is a great option you know right like obviously you can re-sow them every year if you want but I feel like this is a great option and then they should last for years and years and years to come I do love testing things and like pushing the boundaries a little bit like just to see and then they might remain nice little compact plants for next year in my little window box let's have a little look in here and see is anything ready to be picked let me have a little look there's purple there's definitely purple oh they look so beautiful don't they oh let's see if i can pick the biggest one oh look at them this bed has really really surprised me actually i have to say like obviously the strawberries were in here earlier in the year and they weren't a total fail but obviously stuff on this side was a little bit of a fail so really really chuffed with this it's like bursting at the brim with life and i did heavily sow a lot of the stuff in here and it's looking quite good so, I have, I'm going to pick the biggest one and leave the rest to grow on. There's a few little sluggy slugs in here. Pop you down there, my friend. I have leeks and everything in here. They're doing really well. The leeks are actually doing the best in here than they are in anywhere else in the garden, which is really interesting. And I had the leeks on the, the same line in this bed last year, and they did really, really well. Like there's no signs of rust on those which I'm super 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 happy about and I'm just going to pick this one here I think this one's the biggest one these are purple Milan top turnips that I'm growing and there you have it so happy with that how cute is it love it <laughs> little beetle on me that was lovely Leave the rest of these to grow on. Leave you in there. Maybe take up this one. Might me. I know I said I had no plans for dinner, but might do a little roast dinner. So I've got turnip, I have kale, and I've got potatoes from the garden, and then just roast up some. Oh no! I pulled one out that wasn't grown yet. Never mind. And we have like a little roasted turnip. Aren't they fab? They're such a beautiful colour, I love them. And the rest haven't bulbed up just yet. There's two more there, but I think I can leave them grow on a bit. And the beets aren't ready just yet. They're a bit too small. They're about that big at the minute, so I'm going to leave those in to get a bit bigger. I'm really chuffed with those. I grew turnips last year actually, I don't know if I told you this, I grew the turnips, they're in that bed and all I got was like this massive top growth and then I was like no, never again, never again, like everything in that bed is cursed, I don't know why everything grows so big and like it was literally like this 
and I couldn't grow anything else in that bed so I ended up pulling them really early so I'm really really chuffed to actually get this with some like you know like that's reasonable top growth and some beautiful sized turnips at the bottom so yeah I don't know what's going on with this bed everything seems to go crazy in it and I didn't use any manure in it last year so it's not that I don't know I don't know what it is because manure I, put, I topped that with manure in April that was like my very first video I thought maybe that's given it like a massive like nitrogen boost or something to cause all the top growth but last year I didn't it was just pure compost that was in there so I don't know you live and you learn don't you super impressed with those little turnips I think they're the most gorgeous color of purple so let me know in the comments below if you have any questions leave a question with the letter Q and then write obviously write your questions then I know which ones to pick out and if you want to do that then we can do a little sit down chatty Q&A with a cup of tea in a couple of weeks when I'm laid up after my surgery and soon hopefully I'll be back out in the garden and starting some new projects but thank you for watching I appreciate each and every person that watches the videos you guys are absolutely amazing and thank you so much for being here I will see you very very soon bye so thrilled with the kale. <laughs>